In 1902, the Belfast Harbour Commissioners agreed to construct a dry dock capable of housing a new class of superliner. This was essential if Harland and Wolfe were to remain a dominant force in world shipbuilding terms and maintain its successful relationship with the ambitious White Star Line. Three ships would be built at a later stage and this dock was designed for servicing those ships. They were the world-renowned Titanic and her sister ships, Olympic and Britannic. To begin this interactive 3D tour of the Thompson Graving Dock and Pump House, we ask you to imagine the sound of a pair of boots hurrying down the cobbled roads, the rattle of the early tram, the tinny sound of bicycle bells, the clack of hooves as heavy horses make the first delivery of the day. Welcome to Belfast, the birthplace of Titanic, pride of the city. Work on the Thompson Dock commenced in 1904 and 500 men were employed in the build. The dock was expected to take three and a half years to complete, but due to unforeseen circumstances, the build took almost double that. On the evening of the 31st of March, the dock was filled for the first time. The next morning, a large crowd gathered at the dock and surrounding area to witness the arrival of the Olympic. The gate, otherwise known as the Quezon, was opened to allow the Olympic to enter the dock. The Quezon is actually a vessel which could be floated out of position or carried on two rows of heavy rollers which would allow it to move quickly and efficiently. It is manufactured from riveted steel and the fact that it can be opened or closed in five to seven minutes is a credit to the tenacity and innovation of its designers and builders. The whole structure can occupy two closer positions, one inside and one outside the dock. With the caisson housed on the outside, the length of the dock is increased by 37 and a half feet. This latter gate position was needed to accommodate the outfitting of the exceptionally large Olympic class liners, Olympic, Titanic and Britannic. The Olympic then entered the dock, with the help of the winding capstans which were used to warp the ships into the dock. The capstans were forced to turn in a clockwise or anti-clockwise motion by the water pressure, created through the workings of the hydraulic accumulator. In less than an hour, the Olympic was safely installed. For the next nine and a half hours, the water was slowly pumped from the dock, allowing the Olympic to settle on keel blocks and to be stabilised using shoring fitted between her hull and the dock walls. By 9pm on April 1st, 1911, the dock was completely dry and ready for finishing work on the Olympic to commence. Watch closely as we enter the pump house and see the great Victorian and Edwardian engineering that allowed the largest dock in the world to be completely emptied on its first usage in less than 10 hours. Downstairs in the pump house well, you can see the three Gwyn's pumps, which are used to pump 23 million gallons of water from the dock. Only two of these pumps were ever used together and a third was kept as a backup in case one failed. These pumps were capable of draining the dock in less than two hours. Directly above is the movable crane, which was used for maintenance and repair work of machinery within the pump well. The final stop on our interactive tour is at the modern 1950s control desk, nicknamed the piano. This panel operated many functions of the dock and pumps. It is a shame that many of the ships that this dock was originally intended for are now a distant memory. The Titanic was the most famous ship ever to be fitted out in the Thompson Dock and it is essential that this part of Belfast's history is preserved.